in this video I'm going to discuss and illustrate what the difference is between the internet and the World Wide Web. So straight away you obviously know that there is a difference otherwise this video wouldn't exist. So I'm going to start in this video by explaining what the internet is. Once I've done that I'll create another video to explain what the World Wide Web is. The internet. To define the internet we could say that the internet is a global network of networks and we could just leave it there but that doesn't necessarily mean that you understand what the internet is, you just know what it is. It's a global network of networks. So to understand that, we need to know what a network is. So a network is one computer connected to another. It's as simple as that. A network is one computer connected to another. And again, we could just leave it there. We could say, right, now you know what a network is, you should know what the internet is. And if you know what the internet is, we can then start to discuss what the World Wide Web is. However, we need to break it down even more. So you need to understand clearly what a network is. If we say one computer connected to another, in your head you might be visualizing a desktop machine with a cable coming out plugged into another desktop machine. Well, that's okay, but computers, a computer can be classified as anything that computes. So a computer classifies not only desktop machines, but it also classifies laptops, mobile devices such as phones, tablets, uh, games consoles, anything that nowadays can connect to the internet we could class as a computer. So let's have a look at that with the context that you might understand a little bit better. I'm going to discuss what a network is to start with. So I want you to imagine your home here. This is your house and I'm sure that most of you have many devices in your house that connect to the internet. So you might have your desktop machine, you might have a mobile device such as a tablet, a mobile phone, you might even have a games console like a PlayStation or an Xbox. Now if all of these can access the internet from your house and they all do it without using a cable, then you're probably using something called a router. So at my house, for example, I have a desktop machine, but that's got a cable coming out the back of it that goes into my wall. Now that's not using the wireless technology from my router, that's just hardwiring straight into my connection to my internet service provider, which we'll talk about later. However, I also have a tablet device, a mobile phone, and I have my PlayStation, and they all connect to the internet through wireless technology. And the only way that can be done is by having one of these wireless routers here. Now, if all of these devices here are connected to my router, then I have a network, because I have one computer fundamentally connected to another computer using this router as the central point. So if you imagine I had a file on here, I could actually share it with this device because I'm on the same network if I set up the settings correctly. So straight away in my house, and I assume in all of your houses, you actually have a network. You would call it a, a local area network because it's on a, a small geographical scale. So this is a network. Now, we'll come back to this part of the diagram later, but I want to just imagine it on a larger context. So, I assume you all go to school. All right, so schools also have networks, but unlike my home, which has probably got four, five, maybe six, seven devices connected, in a school, they have a lot more devices connected to their network. So, imagine that this is a computer room here, and let's say there's 24 machines in a computer room. They're actually, in my computer room, for example, they are all connected uh, to the internet via a red cable that comes out the back called an ethernet cable and every computer in my classroom has one of these red cables that goes um, actually goes through the roof so it connects to the wall and at the back of that it goes into my roof and then um, all these cables run along my my roof um, and into a little cupboard and inside that cupboard I have something called a switch so all these cables from the computers are going into this thing called a switch in turn, that switch is connected using something called a fiber optic cable that goes through to my server, which is like a huge computer at the school where everything's stored. And then that server, again, is hard cabled into something called a gateway. And that gateway is where I get my internet from. And again, I'll discuss this a little bit later. But also in a school, so imagine I have 30 hardwired computers connected to the internet, and I have actually got maybe seven IT rooms in my school, so seven times 30 is uh, 210. Um, but we also have wireless routers in my school so that students who have their own mobile devices who are walking around the school can also connect uh, to the internet. So we're looking at about um, 
almost a thousand people can be connected to the internet at my school, which means again that I have a network because all these computers somehow are linked together, whether it's through the cables here or whether it's through this router. I'm creating a network and depending on the geographical scale of your school, it could be classed as a WAN, so a wide, um, a wide area network. Um, now, imagine, and I haven't drawn it on here, but imagine I've talked about my home, which is a few devices, my school, which is almost a thousand devices. Imagine large organizations uh, around the world that have even bigger networks, so even more people connected to their internet connection. And there's lots of those around the world. So I've only talked about here, um, where I'm based in the UK. I'm talking about my one house and my one school connected to the internet in my one town. Now, imagine that on a global scale, how many people are connected to the internet. Now, in terms of, again, we haven't discussed what the internet is, actually. Well, what is it? We're just saying we're connected to it. Well, to break that down, I need to start talking about this bit, which I've skipped over a little bit. So at my house, when I have this router, the router is actually plugged into the wall. Uh, and that wall has a port on it, which there's a cable going under the ground. And that cable connects all the way through to my internet service provider. Now, what that is in the UK, where I live, where I am right now in the UK, um, the cable that comes out of my house is connecting me to Virgin Media. Now, Virgin Media is the organization that gives me the internet. So I'm connected to my internet service provider, which is Virgin Media. My school, my school is actually uh, their gateway here, where their internet is given. They're connecting to an internet service provider that could possibly also be Virgin Media, or it could be someone like British Telecoms, which also provide the internet. In Dubai, you might be talking about um, telecommunication services, uh, such as Do or Atisalat, that might be your internet service providers. Um, and fundamentally, what these internet service providers do is they connect all of these networks together. So these WANs, these wide area networks, and these LANs, they're pulling them all together as an internet service provider to give them access to the internet. But again, what is the internet? So imagine that this one internet service provider here is based in the UK. Now, obviously, I've also mentioned there's other internet service providers, ISPs for short. Uh, there might be some um, in Dubai. And there might be some internet service providers. In fact, then it's not my, there are internet service providers in the US and everywhere else around the world. And what's interesting is that these internet service providers are all interconnected. So all of these internet service providers are connected somehow to one another. So it might be that this Dubai internet service provider has a direct link to the internet service provider in the UK. And the UK one might have a direct link to the one in the States. And the one in the States might have a direct link to the internet service provider somewhere else in the world, such as Australia. But notice, the one in the UK here does not have a direct link to the internet service provider that is in Australia. But if I was at my house here and I wanted to connect to a website, for example, that was stored on someone's computer over here in Australia, I could still get to it because I go through my router, I type in the web address, that goes to my internet service provider that says, okay, that web address you've typed in is actually on this server over here in Australia. Now to get to it, there is no direct link. But what I can do is I can follow the link over here that goes straight to the US. And then from the US, it goes over to Australia, gets that website, sends it back to the US, back to the UK, and then back to my router at my house. Um, I'm going to show you a much better visualization of that in just a minute. But as a context, hopefully now what you can see is if we go back through the definitions, a network is one computer connected to another. And the internet is a global network of networks. So my drawing, look, these are all networks and around the world there are a global network of networks and that's what the internet is. It's just all of the networks in the world connected together. Now they can be connected together through hard cabling. Um, they can also be connected together via satellites. That's my satellite dish, looks like a dickybo. So 
for example, these here could actually be connected together, not through a hard cable, but via satellite. Now, hopefully my drawing has helped you a little bit to understand that, but there's this most beautiful app that I want to show you um, that will hopefully allow you to visualize this even better, and it's called the Internet Map app. It's this one here. Okay, so that one there. I'm going to click on it. It's free to download from the App Store. It's available on iOS. And this is it. What you're seeing right now is the internet. I know that sounds strange, but this is a visualization of what the internet looks like. So you can see this is a globe, and I can move this globe around. And all of these bright tones that you can see uh, in here, if I just zoom in a little bit, all these bright tones, you can see these bright circles here. They're all ISPs, internet service providers. Actually, some of them are internet exchange points, but we won't talk about those in too much detail. Um, so if I just click on one, I'll just click on this little blue, big blue one here, it tells me that that is level three communications. And what level three communications has is 2,640 connections to it. That doesn't mean 2,640 people are connected to that ISP. It means that 2,640 ISPs or IEPs are connected to that one. All right, so let's just have a look at this diagram that I drew earlier. Here you can see that the um, ISP in the UK in my drawing has three connections to it. One here that goes to Dubai, one here that goes to the US, and one here that goes via satellite to Australia. So this ISP has three connections that it can get to. And this one that I've just talked about, it has 2,640 connections. What's really nice about this is I can swap from the global view by clicking on this little eye icon, the network view, and another fantastic visualization of what the internet is. And what this has done is it showed me the largest um, internet service providers or IEPs in the world. So the, the bigger the dot, the bigger the um, service provider. So again, if I just click on this blue one, that one is Conjured PSI. It's got 2,359 connections to it. If I um, go on search here and click on my location, this will tell me what's the internet service provider I'm connected to. Remember I mentioned it earlier, um, I'm actually connected to Virgin Media and it tells me your device that you're using right now, which is my iPad, is connected to Virgin Media's ISP. And there's 73 connections to this ISP. If I swap views and go to a global view and again do the search, okay, so we can see that 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 is where the Virgin Media Limited are, are, um, are based. Now, what's really nice about this as well is if I just go and find, let's let's just go and find a really um, obscure ISP. Let's go for this one here. Okay, I don't, I don't know where that is, but it's got one connection to it. Now, what's really interesting here is if there's a web page that I want to access on that server, on that ISP, how many different servers, you know that I'm based in Virgin Media, how many different servers do I have to go through to get to that one? So if I press perform trace route, that's going to say, right, from Virgin Media ISP to get to that ISP, you've got to do 15 hops. That means I've got to jump through 15 different ISPs to get to that one. So imagine what I did here, look. When the satellite wasn't there, if I... Um, if I wanted to get to a web page here that was um, located on the ISP in Australia and there was no direct link from the UK ISP to the Australia one, I would have to go from my house, that's not a hop, I would have to go straight from this ISP in the UK over to the States, so that's one hop, and then over to Australia, that's two hops. I'd have to hop from one ISP to another to get the web page that I want. What I'm saying is if I wanted to get a, um, a link to this Dialnet D Columbia from where I am at Virgin Media, I'd have to do 15 hops to get there, which is quite interesting. Um, that's, you can also search for different ISPs. So let's go for a Chisalat, which I know is in, Chisalat, I believe is in Dubai here. I might be wrong. This might not be the Chisalat that I'm thinking of. But if I perform a trace route from Virgin Media to a Tissalat, it's 12 hops, 12 hops. 
Now this could actually vary. I know this may sound strange, but it could vary depending on which, for example, it might be heavy traffic from one ISP to another. Um, and so they might use different ISPs to hop between to get to that one. It's basically going to try and go for the fastest connection. So for example, I could perform this same hop tomorrow and it could be four hops. But right now it's conducting 12 hops to get from Virgin Media to Etisola MISR um, and it's taking 2,575 milliseconds. So if we go back to what the original intentions of this video were, which is to understand the difference between the internet and the World Wide Web, if you remember what I said, we need to first of all understand what the internet is and that's what this video is. It's trying to understand what is the internet. And the internet is a global network of networks. All the networks in the world link together. What is a network? That's one computer connected to another. This diagram illustrates the different types of networks you might be familiar with, a home network and a school network, and the fantastic internet map application available on iOS gives us a beautiful visualization of what the internet might look like.